Hey everyone, Karen here and welcome to the studio. For this week's video, I'm going to be painting for fun. So this is what I do in the studio when I don't have any plan. In other words, I don't have a, a, a lesson to prepare for or I don't have a, a exercise that I want to work on personally. I just want to paint but I don't want it to be too stressful or too anxiety provoking. I just want to have fun. So what do I do? I go to my discard box. So this is a box that I keep, very fancy box, that I keep near my easel on the shelf. And they are paintings that maybe were unfinished demos. This happens to be a, a sky demo. Or paintings that just didn't meet the cut. Maybe they were experiments. Maybe they were paintings that meant to be good, but they just you know, they didn't please me. So instead of throwing them out, because I know sometimes we get frustrated and we just want it, we don't want to see them anymore, so we throw them out. I just keep them in a box. And when I have time to paint and I don't know what I want to paint or don't really have anything in particular in mind, I take something out of the discard box and I rework it. So the first thing that I usually do when I rework a painting is I take the painting and I liquefy the pastel so that I create a underpainting, a wet underpainting. So I already did one here, and I'm going to do another one for you just to show you what I mean. These two uh, paintings, I guess you could call them, were actually demos for Cloud and Sky Workshop. So I don't really want them to be sky paintings, but they, they serve their purpose. Now it's time to just use the paper. It's nice UART sanded paper, so I don't want to waste it. I don't want to throw it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little rubbing alcohol, put it in a cup, and I'm going to liquefy it. I'm going to use a really cheap, crummy uh, bristle brush that you get at the hardware store because all I want to do is scrub in the liquid. Now you can certainly use water, you can use the odorless mineral spirits that we've been talking about, you can use anything to liquefy the pastel. I'm using rubbing alcohol because it tends to dry faster than water and you can often get more interesting drips with it. I didn't even bother to uh, brush off the pastel layer, I'm just simply using the alcohol to wet the pastel. It works best if you work from the lighter colors to the darker colors, so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just wetting it so that I have, okay, you, you, you're probably saying, well, what, why are you doing that? Why bother? Just, you know, paint on top of it. But my goal for this is so that I don't have just a plain white piece of paper to respond to, that I have something interesting. Because white paper or plain paper tends to be intimidating. I had this idea uh, this morning when I was wetting the other one. What happens if I just flick some alcohol at the painting? Would I get some more interesting drips and dribbles that way? And actually I did, probably not as much on this one. Oh, there we go. So I'm always playing, I'm always experimenting and saying, what if I try this or what if I try that? And so basically, that's what I'm going to do. Now what, what do you do with your alcohol? What I do is instead of throwing it down the drain, I put my paper towel in there to soak it up and just wipe it, use it to wipe my little jar clean, and then I throw it out. And that's a good way to discard your alcohol. All right, so we'll let that one dry, and then I'm going to uh, paint on this one for today's painting. Now, I did another one on, fr I think it was Friday, when I had playtime in my studio, and I decided I would paint some Queen Anne's Lace, because this reminded me of flowers reaching up into a, a beautiful blue sky. And so I had so much fun with that one that I thought, well, why not do it in a smaller version? And I also had some of you ask about... Um, painting grasses and some tips for painting grasses and I have done videos on painting grasses and lots of blog posts on painting grasses but I'll try to uh, explain a, a little bit more tips kind of I have a step-by-step -step method when it comes time for painting grasses and I can share with you that step-by-step -step method but ultimately it's going to be your own personal calligraphy or the way you make your marks that's going to make your grasses look different than mine so basically your grass shouldn't look like mine your grass should look like your grass and so I'll give you some tips but don't try to copy the way I do let your own handwriting come out because that's really what makes art unique is where we each express ourselves in a different manner 
So I'm looking at this and I say, okay, what's the first thing I'm going to do? Well, I'm going to look at my photo, which is this is the photo that I'm using. But the photo is only going to be there as inspiration for color, for shapes, for textures. But I'm not going to copy it the way it is. So oftentimes what I will find is I stop looking at the photo. Now I start painting and the painting starts to uh, come on it become its own entity and I don't even look at the photo anymore so a lot of times when I'm painting and we take the camera off the photo don't get frustrated with that because I'm not really looking at the photo anymore the photo was there to just to get me started and to give me some ideas so to give me ideas I have to look at it and say okay I want some flowers coming up and reaching into the sky how can I make that happen how can I arrange the flowers so that they're going to be interesting and I don't really want to copy the one that I just did. I want to make this one a little bit different. So I'm going to put in, I call this my one inch rule. When I'm painting flowers or clouds, if my flower shapes are going to be larger than an inch, then I'm going to make room for them in the painting. If they're smaller than an inch, what I will do is be able to put them right on top of the background. So all of these flowers that I just drew, these oval shapes, they're going to be larger than an inch. So I want to leave room for them so that I don't uh, have to cover up something that's too dark. I've arranged the flowers so that my eye flows through the grasses, throw, flows around the flowers. So I don't want to look at the photo because the photos may not have the flowers in a very good arrangement. So I'm going to arrange them in my own way. I will always be open to moving flowers around, taking some out, putting some in. So it's very fluid. You know, it's going to change as as, as the painting progresses. All right, so the first thing that I do is I'm going to reinforce all the dark areas. So the darkest areas in this painting are going to be the grassy uh, part at the bottom. And here's tip number one for painting grass. You want to start from the dirt up, okay? So I, I say that for to remind myself that I want to start as dark and rich <clears throat> as I possibly can. Think that you want to have some nice dark rich soil so that your grasses have something nice to grow uh, in and something that will hold those roots and stems in place. So I have to start darker than I actually intend to be. I'm starting with a dark purple. I'm using the side of the pastel to create wide areas of, I'm going to just call it dirt. This is the dirt. I don't paint any single blades of grass in these early stages. Now I want my dirt to be interesting and rich, so I'm going to use another color that is the same value as the purple. And this happens to be a dark, cool red. I think red and purple work nicely together to make rich dirt. I'm going to add another layer, and I'm using a very light touch. This is a dark blue that is also the same value as the purple and the red. When I say I'm using a light touch, I want to be able to see the, the colors that are underneath. So I, have, I can see the blue, I can see the purple, I can see the red, and I can see the actual underpainting. And then finally, because this is, after all, something that's green, I'm going to add large areas of a dark green in my dirt area. I know this seems kind of strange, but bear with me because I have to start with big, bold, uh, simple shapes and then I'll gradually add the detail. If you notice, I started to pull some of that dark up a little bit further than I originally had it. And this is so that I can get an airy feeling to my grass. So this is a little bit denser and this is a little bit lighter, lighter touch that is. All right, now. The next thing I'm going to do is mark out where my flowers are going to be. And I'm going to use, let me think here, let's use this kind of a dull gray, greenish tan color. And wherever I want those flowers, I'm going to use wide marks to, to put them into the painting. Now here's the part where I, um, I have learned, because I've done it enough where I made mistakes is you don't want all your flowers to be on top of the grass because then it looks like you have grass and then you came and you, you glued flowers on top. 
but I have to put them in. But know that I will cover some of this up with some of the, um, the grasses as I move on. Now I also want there to feel like there's some little smaller flowers in the background. So I'm using a very grayed green for a nice distant color to put in some indications of uh, little flowers that are in the distance. So I won't probably do much more to those except for maybe I'll add a little bit hint of a, of a gray down violet and that'll help push them back into the distance a little bit more. All right, so what do I have now? I have already an indication of the sky, which is kind of cool. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use the colors that are already here and just enhance them with actual pastel. Look at what's happening in this underpainting. Doesn't it look like they're starting to be kind of a glow, like maybe, maybe the sun is there, or maybe there's haze coming through a wispy cloud, something of that effect. I really like what's happening here, so I'm going to try to preserve that, and to do that I'm going to take a pale yellow and just work that down into the, from the, that spot that was there and work it down into the grasses just a little bit. I happen to be using a um, pale yellow new pastel, um, which is a harder pastel, and it really doesn't matter if I use hard or soft. At this point, I'm, it's more about the color and the value that I'm interested in. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and use some of the blues. I want to match the blue to the color and the value that's already there in the underpainting. So I have several blue pastels already out on my tray. And if you've been following me, then you do know already that I like to choose my pastel palette in advance. And then that way I can paint without having to stop and think about everything, trying to pick the right colors. Oops. So I'm just layering. I'm doing what is called a fractured sky for this painting, because I'm not showing very much sky. Um, if you're new to this page and you missed the present, the, the, I think we spent over a month on painting skies and clouds back in um, June, I believe. You can go back and catch those videos and those lessons. I'm using the sky color to start to break up the grassy area. So see where I'm making these little marks in the grass? This is called negative painting. And I'm painting the sky so that the grasses start to come forward. So sometimes you paint what's behind a shape to make the shapes come out. Now I'm looking at this painting and I'm seeing all of these flowers right in here, but I, I feel like there's this big empty spot in this area. And I think, you know what? Before I go too much further, I probably ought to put something up in that area. Otherwise, it's going to look a little bit bare. All right, that's better. Okay, now I have everything blocked in, including the sky, so it's time to develop further the flowers and the grasses. So let's develop the flowers first. Um, and to do that, I'm going to build them. I'm lo look at the photos, for example, but I'm going to build them using pale, dull greens and yellows. I'm just going to go on top. And then, I remember I said I want some of these to be hidden in the grass. Well, I will hide them, but I'm going to just wait until I get to the grass stage before I do that. So I'm getting lighter. There's a, a, a little bit of a lighter value yellow. At this point, all of the flowers have um, what I call equal attention to detail. So they all have the same level of detail, which is not much, but they're all the same. But as I go further, I'm going to have to start to decide which ones are going to get more detail and more clarity, and which ones are going to just kind of disappear and not have as much attention. I'm also finding at this point that everything is going in one direction. And I think that sometimes that's a little bit boring. So I'm going to change. Look at these three. I've got one, two, three potatoes all lined up in a row. That happens. And that's not all very, very interesting. So I've got to change something. 
So which one could I change? I think I'm going to change this one. So I'm going to brush this guy out. I'm going to put a little sky in there. Now actually, I didn't really need that, right? That works. Just remove. And a lot of times, sometimes, a lot of times, sometimes, sometimes, it's not what you add, but what you take away that makes a painting more interesting. So sometimes when you're not sure, when you look at something and you're like, eh, there's just too much going on, eliminate something and see if that doesn't make it look better. All right, now I want to, I will work more on the flowers, but I want to start to develop the grasses. So I have the dirt. So I'm going to continue adding some green on top of the dirt. So, Michael, could you grab the fixative spray over on my shelf? I forgot to, I forgot to put it out on my tray. Thank you. I like to build up my um, grassy area using a combination of layering the pastel and a light dust, dusting, a light coat of workable fixative. And I like to sometimes kind of spray it in a bad way. See where I'm getting all these dots? by just pressing on the button, and that's going to just give me a little bit more texture. It's got to dry just a hair. While it's drying, I'm going to take a hard pastel, and I'm going to pull, you kind of unify or knit my, my blue uh, marks in the sky by making, what I'm doing is I'm making linear marks like this with a hard pastel. And these linear marks blend the pastel together keeping the marks fresh rather than if I went in there with my finger and tried to blend them, it would get all mushy and flat and dull. So I'm using the hard pastel as a blending tool, like so. All right, now this is dry enough, so I'm going to come in with some green. And it's important to note that I use big, wide strokes of green for as long as I possibly can before I start making individual blades of grass. It's Heidi in the background making itchy. I know some of you said you miss seeing the, the pets, but they don't always hang out when we're videoing and they don't always cooperate with us. I'm adding a lighter, duller green, and those are going to be the grasses that are more in the distance further back and kind of more of a dried feeling to them. Still working with big broad strokes of grass. Now notice, look at what's happening. I'm hiding some of those flowers that we talked about earlier. What if I wanted to bring some of them back? I just come in with, with some fresh pastel marks. It's time for another coating of fixative. And I will do several layers, go back and forth with fixative, more layers, fixative, more layers. While, that, while that's drying, I'm going to start to brighten up the flowers. So I'm adding a lighter value in the, in the flowers on the tops, leaving some of the dark in place. All right. I, I put in a few little orangey ones earlier just to see if I like it, and I do like it. And I think because I have the orangey one, I'm going to reintroduce a little bit more of the red. Cover it up. I just want it to be hidden in the grass. I'm going to go ahead and make more bold, grassy strokes. I have several greens lined up in my tray, and I'll take a picture of the tray and put it uh, in the write-up of this particular painting so that you can see the variety of greens that I'm using. All right, now I'm needing another layer of fixative. And you're probably wondering, how many layers of fixative do you actually use in your grasses? Well, it depends on how complex I want to get those grasses, how much texture I want to get in the grasses, and so there's not really any set, um, there's no rule about it. That's the, that's the fun part of this, is that there's no rule. I'm going to darken the bases of these flowers just a hair so that they kind of stand out a little bit more. Add a little bit more dark. And let's start to brighten up some of the greens. Now I'm starting to look 
at my um, photo for a little bit more inspiration because in my photo I see different types of glasses. So they're not all like this. They're starting to, there's some um, kind of bushy stuff. So I'm going to use some of the greens to kind of create a little bit more of those. I'm using different types of marks. So when I talked earlier about mark making and how everyone's grass is going to look different because we all make our marks in different ways, this is what I'm talking about. The way I make my marks are probably going to be different than the way you do yours. And what I'm doing now is I'm starting to just come in and make different marks looking at the photo to, to give me ideas of what kind of stuff is growing in this wild tangle of grass. So I'm creating some um, marks that are not just up and down. Because if we make all our grasses up and down like that, it's not going to be quite as interesting. So I want to have a variety in my, in my mark making. All right, now I'm going to come in and I'm going to put some stems on some of these flowers. And if I have the wind going this way, I'm going to pull down some stems. And I'm using a hard pastel, a new pastel, and a dark green. And I'm using what I call um, dancing lines, because I'm not allowing the pastel to well, I'm allowing the pastel to skip over. I'm not making solid lines. I can show you with this blue here. I don't want to make a solid line. I want to make a broken line. Press and release, press and release. And that makes it feel more natural. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, flowers, which, which of you are going to be the stars? I want to hide another guy here, and I totally lost him, so I'm reintroducing him but I'm careful not to make it too dense. I'm going to say that this area here is going to be the focal area or the star. So I'm using my lightest light, which is just about white, to just brighten up that biggest flower and then some of the flowers on the edges and leading to the focal area. So I'm going to let all of these kind of just go out of focus and really only focus on this area right in here. All right, let's talk about the grasses. I still could develop a little bit more complexity in the grass. So again, I'm going to spray it one more time. And I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but look at how it darkens this whole grassy area. And that's really what I'm after. I want it to feel to get a little bit darker. And as it dries, I'm going to drag a very, very pale yellow pastel over this some of this dark area because what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to create depth in this grassy area. I don't want all my grasses just to look like a fence. I want it to look nice and deep like in other words if I were a, a bug or a mouse I could kind of crawl in and out in and around them. All right. Coming up to the finish. So the last thing that I do is I actually draw some linear marks. So I take out a collection of miscellaneous harder pastels. These happen to be just a collection of new pastels, some Russian pastels. Uh, and I'm going to use those to actually paint my grassy lines or my linear marks. So these linear grass marks are actually the very last thing that I do to the painting. And I'll just use a variety of colors. Let's use this um, kind of golden ochre one to create some dry grasses. I'm changing, varying the pressure, varying the direction of the grasses, because a tangle of grasses doesn't all grow in the same direction. So I want to have a variety. And this is how I do it. There's no really science to it. I'm just kind of feeling my way around, adding colors, adding shapes, adding textures. Uh, I could get a little bit of light on the edge of this stem. And maybe I look at it and I say, well, I think I could use a few more darker. I like those kind of darker weedy marks coming in there. I can add a few more of those. Maybe I can do another spray of fix it. Look at how it darkens it. 
go to dry just a little bit, I could come in with the sky color and use it to negatively paint, to pull, to make the grasses feel a little bit more airy and light at the tips. I can come in with a lighter new pastel to create some of those really airy looking. Alright, I think you have the idea by now that it's just a matter of going back and forth, back and forth, a little spray, a little more layering, a little spray, a little bit more layering, and finally coming in at the end to create those linear marks. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add what I call the spicy marks. And I'm using this really bright, um, one might call it uh, artificial looking green, and I'm coming in and adding a few bits and pieces here and there so that the eye kind of catches on them, and I call these spices or eye candy, and I only want to put them in a few places. And that's it. That's how I have fun on my day off in the studio. Awesome. Oh, say hi, hi to Heidi. Heidi, Heidi, you itchy. Heidi. All right. Thanks, everybody.